nonviolence instinct of King is part of the, 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 the black radical tradition. When you look back across the 245 years of slavery, uh, it was uh, 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 the black radical nonviolent response, if you will. And Martin Luther King really sort of uh, 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 embodied that in, in an interesting way that uh, we can see now. Uh, I, 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 I find it very interesting that 50 years on at Morehouse College, where Martin Luther King had a relationship, there is now the Gandhi King Ikeda uh, Peace or organization and the Gandhi King Ikeda Peace Award every year. Right. Gandhi, an Indian, Martin Luther King, who we're talking about now, and Daisaku Ikeda, uh, a, a brilliant uh, uh, a Buddhist, uh, a head of a lay organization, uh, who Japanese, mm -hmm. uh, who's dedicated his life to peace. Uh, along with Martin Luther King, who dedicated his life to peace, and Mahatma Gandhi, who dedicated his life to peace. An Indian, a Japanese, and an African-American. And there it is. So you don't buy into, I was reading somewhere that uh, many people say that his image was created after his death and that it's been somewhat sanitized, that he wasn't quite the person we remember now. That doesn't seem to be your point of view. No, not at all. Martin Luther King was, uh, uh, he was vilified during his life. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the FBI, uh, uh, J. Edgar Hoover had, had uh, eavesdropped on his telephone conversations, uh, had put together uh, a whole organization to, inter integr to, to, to integrate the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. Uh, he was, they thought of him as being a communist. Uh, you know that, that, that the great speech that he gave uh, uh, just a year before his death, uh, where he talked about Vietnam, mm -hmm. uh, and, and the, thing, the event that preceded his death was the Poor People's Campaign. And he was in Memphis, Tennessee, protesting along with the sanitary workers, uh, their uh, lack of uh, uh, good pay and, and, and good conditions, that sort of thing. So Martin Luther King was very interested in questions of poverty, questions of equality, questions of justice, questions of community, this sort of thing. Uh, and he was vilified for that. And so was his image, has his image been sanitized? And, you know, I think he's been, he's been um, how can I put this? I, what the, the word that comes to me is politicized. Right, right. <laughs> okay, that's, that's the word that, that, that I want to use. Uh, uh, that the, the core of his message, the core of his message, I think, is a message that we still need to hear today, that we need to come together as, as, as a community, as, as, as people who, uh, what, what we share, we have differences. Right. We have different color skins and this sort of thing, but what we have is a common human heart. So as you say, he started off concerned with black civil rights, then moved on to general poverty there, and uh, American foreign yeah, policy issues yeah. such as Vietnam. Let's get back to, as you say, that core campaign, which is what he is most remembered for. Mm. Uh, there's that lovely saying which uh, came about when uh, Barack Obama was elected saying, Martin walked so Obama could run, so our children could fly. Mm -hmm. Are they flying? How far away from that image is the life of ordinary black kids in the United States? Oh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's very, 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 very complicated. Um, one, of the, one of the things that we're dealing with is the horrendous... Uh, I don't think people realize how... how pervasive, how deep, how profound the legacy of slavery is in America. Mm -hmm. huh? The idea that 245 years of treating people as animals, as not being human beings, and then having 1865, having the Emancipation Proclamation, and all of a sudden, the people uh, who you considered not human beings are now soldiers. They're now uh, buying farms. They're now building homes. They're now building communities. America has never come to grips with that. We've never been able to uh, accept the idea that these former people are a part of us. And this is one of the things that Martin Luther King was bringing, uh, bringing our attention to. This is, one of the, this, is, this is why nonviolence, because, because violence is not going to get you there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, violence begets violence. Uh, but, you know, we have, uh, we have this, 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 this Stefan uh, in, in Sacramento. 
yes. shot to death in his grandmother's backyard, shot eight times in the back. That's the recent case. This where is this is the mo- this is the most recent case. Shot yeah. in Sacramento. Yeah, the kid in Shock, Sacramento. Uh, we have the the black man walking down the street. His 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 wife had had drowned his children. The man was mentally deranged. I mean, and he's walking down the street uh, and the police, their solution, shoot him. They kill him. So what do you think Martin Luther King would have said about the Black Lives Matter movement? Martin Luther King would have been in front of the Black Lives Matter uh, movement. Martin Luther King would have been right there at the head of it. And Martin Luther King would have it would have, I mean, that that was actually part of Martin Luther King's message. Mm-hmm. Huh? Our lives matter. That that began 1954 with Brown versus uh, Board of Education. Segregation does not work because because we our lives matter. Mm-hmm. That be, Rosa Park when she sat down on that bus, the, creating the uh, to, which started the Montgomery bus uh, boycott in 1955. Mm-hmm. She was saying, "My life matters." Martin Luther King, when he led that, when he marched on, across the bridge on Selma, when he uh, uh, led the campaign in Birmingham, when he wrote, that's what he's basically saying in that famous letter from Birmingham jail, My, black lives matter. Yeah. Yeah, and so we can't... We can't uh, he, he said towards the end of his life that his dream had turned into a nightmare. And you are painting a very dispiriting picture of, of what's been achieved. What has been achieved in that time? Well, what's what's been achieved is we have become more and more aware of the insanity of white America. We've become more and more aware of the fact that, uh, I mean, the good thing is white America no longer thinks that slavery is normal. Mm-hmm. White America no longer thinks that uh, uh, putting dogs on children and water hoses on children and not allowing children to, to get a decent education, they no longer think that's normal. But we still we have a long way to go because somehow or another, it's, it's okay that we're, we're shooting our children in the street. Right. Uh, you see what I mean? And so one of the things that we have to do is continue to wake up the world to the fact that inhumanity towards another human being is not normal. It's not acceptable. And how is America uh, remembering Martin Luther King Day tomorrow? And how is Trump using or not using that anniversary to uh, further the black cause with his well-known? Well, I mean, we, we already I mean, we already know the answer to that uh, uh, with the, this latest murder of a black kid uh, wantonly by the police. Not a word from Trump. Uh, I don't think we're going to hear anything from Trump. I don't think Trump cares. I don't think Trump, uh, he doesn't care. I don't think he, that's not on his radar, that there was a Martin Luther King, that there was a, that there is segregation, that there's discrimination, that there's job discrimination, housing discrimination, that uh, you have to understand that Trump and his political party are working very hard to turn back the Voting Rights Act of 1964. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, right now, we're talk- you know, the Trump and his people are talking about uh, illegal voters and fake voters and, and, and that sort of thing to try and disenfranchise uh, black and minorities from voting. So uh, I, 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 I don't think Trump gives a toss. And uh, the Obamas, can we expect to see them at commemorations tomorrow? But absolutely. We will see uh, the Obamas at the commemoration tomorrow. Obama started his work as a community organizer. Uh, The Obama Foundation in Chicago now is up and it's 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 up and running, and and its efforts are to bring communities together, to go into communities, to to bring opportunity in communities, and and uh, tomorrow will be an occasion for Mr. Obama to. Uh, articulate his message once again. So, so we haven't, we ha- we have not, and will not give up in spite of Trump and in spite of all of the other efforts to turn the clock back. We are determined to demonstrate uh, to the world uh, the profound good of the human spirit and the human heart. Yeah, and indeed, uh, Martin Luther King himself said he wanted to be remembered as someone who tried to love and serve humanity, didn't he? Thank you very much. Curtis Young, 
was my guest today here on Radio France International. That's it from Paris Live PM, from me, Angela Diffley, and everyone else here in the studio. Until we meet again, take care. <laughs>